week on One Devotion. Meet a Euroleague superstar who's following a unique tradition at his position. Get the lowdown on another Euroleague player's fascination with psychology. Go down memory lane with an icon who starred in one of the greatest halves ever played. And find out which two teams punched their playoff tickets this week. As one of the most dominant players in the Euroleague this decade, FC Barcelona centre Ante Tomic has proven his talent in multiple ways while reaching three Final Fours in his first four full seasons in the competition. But one feature of Tomic's game that makes him stand out is his passing. A rare talent for any centre, but even more so for a player who stands 2 metres 17. At 28 years old, Tomic has become the Euroleague's best passing centre, with more than 200 assists in his career so far, many of which are more impressive for being made in crowds around the basket. First of all, I didn't know that I'm the best passer among centres in this decade, uh, but we are, we, are, we are in 2015, so there's five more years to finish the, this decade. Uh, mm, I don't know, that, that's, a, that's a part of my talent, let's say, that uh, skill that I have, passing skill, which is, which is very important in basketball. Um, for me, it's very important it's because it's part of my game. During his two-plus seasons at Barcelona, Tomic's passing numbers have surpassed all other centres in the Euroleague, as he has become the only one of them to average two assists per game in any of the last three seasons. Trying to do my best and try to uh, help my team. In this case, assists. In some other cases, rebounds, points. I mean, in these three years, two and a half years in Barcelona, that part of my talent just pop up, let's say. It appears there's like a new for me, but it isn't. When talking about big men who excelled as passers, the great Nikola Vujicic quickly comes to mind. As it happens, Vujicic, like Tomic, is from Croatia. As such, young Tomic grew up learning as he watched Vujicic play with the great Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv teams of the last decade. Yeah, of course. I watched his games in, in Maccabi when, when, he, when he was on, on the peak of his career. Uh, yeah, he was playing amazing. He was playing like, uh, like in some situations like four, some situations uh, like five, but his, his passing skills, uh, they helped them a lot to, to play that well and to win so, so many trophies. Tomic and Vujicic even coincided with the Croatian national team once, which gave the young Tomic the perfect opportunity to get first-hand knowledge from one of the best players ever at his position. We've been together one summer in national team, and, well, we talked about everything, not, about, not just about basketball or, or assists. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was it was good experience for me because he was, uh, he was the best best center in, in, in those days and he helped me a lot that summer. Tomic has picked up where Vujicic left off as a passer, the two of them topping all Euroleague centers in assists for 10 of the last 11 years. But the fact that both are from Croatia is something that Tomic sees as a coincidence. It's just, like I said before, it's part of the talent, it's the skill that someone have, someone don't have. It, it happens so that me and Nikola, we are like maybe the best passers in, in that position in Europe, but I think there is a lot more like, big guys who can pass and who can play. The assist is a part of the game that can often be spectacular, but its basis is the epitome of team play. And when given an opinion about the art of assist, Tomic refers to another Croatian icon. I remember one interview with, with Tony Kukoc and they asked him about maybe the similar or the same question like, uh, like now. 
And he said, with assist you make two people happy. And with basket you make only yourself happy. <laughs> Seska, Moscow point guard Aaron Jackson is nearing his 100th career EuroLeague game and targeting a third consecutive appearance in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. Both of those feats require a player to be mentally strong at a minimum, so it might come as no surprise to learn that Jackson was, and remains, an eager student of psychology. At college was more uh, children's psychology, but you know, I guess being athletes, we're all big kids at heart. In his sixth pro season and fourth in the EuroLeague, Jackson enjoys psychology as much now as when he chose to study it at university and continues to educate himself in the ways of the human mind. I read a lot of mental books, like one of my favorite books to read is uh, Mind Gym, which is a uh, psychology and sports. So sometimes I see myself when I'm reading the book and then I see an example during a game or during a practice or just being around my teammates. I see a lot of examples I read in books. Jackson's career has taken him from Turkey to Italy to Spain and now Russia. And no matter where he goes, teams expect him, as a point guard, to take on a leadership role. Jackson has found that psychology helps him to better read and lead those around him. I think being a manager in your team is, uh, is real, real important for psychology because you have to know the ups and downs, you have to know what makes players happy, and you have, also you have to know what will make a player uh, mad and, um, and discomfort. So psychology does a big part right, um, in, that, in that aspect of the game. Jackson admits that some of the skills that help him with his teammates can also serve as tricks up his sleeve for opponents. I don't really use psychology, but I like to do uh, a lot of mind games to, uh, to mess with our players. Um, you know, just just being aggressive or try to uh, make jokes as much as possible to get them off uh, off game. But uh, not really much as what I've learned in college. No. As far as making him a better player, Jackson doesn't think that study in psychology has changed him on the court. I don't think so. I think it makes me uh, better to read people or, or be a good judgment with uh, friends, or, but when it comes to basketball, uh, no, I think that's just what I do um, off the court and hard work. Being that the study of psychology is not all that common among EuroLeague stars, the question Jackson sometimes gets is... What I like about psychology? Just the fact of just knowing people uh, inside and out. I read a book, um, it's basically said when I was younger, where, like all psychologists are a little crazy, and I like to think that I'm a little crazy, so one day um, I took children's psychology and then I just stuck with it. As an accomplished basketball player with a background in psychology, might coaching be the next step in Jackson's career when his playing days come to an end? I thought about it. Um, it's, not, it's, it's nothing that I think about in the immediate future. Um, right now, I just want to play basketball as long as I can. But hopefully when I'm done, uh, I would like to be a scout. Whichever direction Jackson decides to pursue after his career, what's clear is that he will keep moving forward with psychology in mind. Let's find out what happened in round 11 of the top 16. FC Barcelona secured a playoff spot and Maccabi Electra also closed the gap on Real Madrid, which lost at Panathinaikos while Alba Berlin eliminated Galatasaray. Already qualified Real Madrid had an opportunity to take a step towards ceiling top spot, but couldn't take it as Panathinaikos produced an outstanding performance in Athens. Nikos Papas top scored with 20 points in a game containing many spectacular plays, and 16 points from JC Carroll wasn't enough to prevent Panathinaikos from giving its playoff push a big boost. FC 
FC Barcelona joined Madrid in the playoffs, securing its fifth consecutive victory with a hard-earned win at Cervena Zvezda, with a double-double from Thomas Satoransky leading the way. Panathinaikos' victory meant that Alba Berlin needed a win to stay in strong playoff contention. And the German team did just that as 10 assists from Reggie Redding set up a vital victory over Galatasaray, which became the first team to be eliminated from playoff contention. Reigning champion Maccabi Electra got back into the winning groove after two straight losses, defeating Jalgiris Kaunas behind a career-high 26 points from Jeremy Pargo. Madrid remains top despite defeat with one game separating every single team in a remarkably symmetrical group. Fenerbahce kept its winning run going, Seska Moscow was triumphant on the road, Olympiakos stumbled in Vitoria and Anadolu Efes gained a key win. Fenerbahce became the latest team to book a playoff ticket, holding off EA7 Milan for its eighth consecutive victory. Bogdan Bogdanovic was the star performer, scoring 25 points en route to the weekly B1 MVP award, while Nemanja Bjelica compiled 13 points, 9 rebounds and 6 assists. The game of the week saw FS bring a much-needed end to its losing sequence and reignite its playoff challenge with a crucial victory over Nizhny Novgorod. Milka Bielica delivered an all-action display with 15 points, while Tomá Hertel dished 9 assists to overcome 22 points from Artyom Parahoski. Ceska Moscow came close to three figures in an entertaining win over Unicaja, as Milos Teodosic turned on the style with 25 points and 8 assists. Laboral Kucha kept its playoff push very much alive with an entertaining home win over Olympiakos as Mike James came up with 17 points and 5 steals to help his team prevail by one point. Fenerbahce and Seska sit at top of the group with Olympiakos dropping one game behind while FS and Laboral remain tied for fourth. Everybody in this team, everybody. Really, we have hard practices and nobody can avoid to make something easier than, than the other stuff, so... Stefan Marko is one of the guys who real, take real serious practices. Uh, who goes the hardest? Bruno. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Oh, yeah. Everyone practices pretty hard. Seta <sighs> Chetin. He just come to the team, but he's really professional and he's always staying after the practice to shot. Nico Faba. I cannot say one guy who is practicing the most. Obviously, as the season goes on, you have younger players like, like Mario Hezoni, especially. He's, he's very dedicated and practices a lot and spends extra time. Jorovic, this is a this is guy who, who, uh, who practices a lot after, after we go home, they stay to work more. I think some of our young Russian guys, uh, when they play with us, they practice real hard, or our captain, Simeon. Uh, the hardest practice is the younger guys. Me. I don't see anybody as a coach right now. Uh, Marcelino Huertas, I think, has a good chance of being a coach because he's a great point guard and, and understands the game. I would love to be coach someday after. Panathinaikos Athens guard AJ Slaughter may be a rookie in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague this season, but the effect he has had on one of the competition's most successful clubs is summed up in his role as a full-time starter and the leading scorer for the Greens. After taking his pro career from Italy to France to Belgium over the last four seasons, Slaughter landed in Athens to complete a progression that he had in mind from a very young age. Practically born with a basketball in my crib, 
uh, with my sisters and my dad playing, so I always knew growing up that, that I would play the game of basketball. Slaughter's family is indeed one with a deep relationship to basketball. His father and two sisters played high-level university basketball and provided the environment in which he could flourish as a player growing up. With so many basketball players in the family, it's not hard to imagine the competitive level they reached without so much as leaving their house. Very competitive. Uh, I remember times out in the backyard, me and my dad and my sisters playing. Uh, we were, me and my sister were literally getting into fights. Uh, she was older than me and was bigger than me for a while, so it would really get competitive and, and, and turn into fights sometimes. Slaughter was talented, and the pinnacle moment of beating his own dad arrived rather early for him. Uh, he was easy to beat, man. Uh, I would say around around 12 or 13, he started to slow down and get old, so uh, he used my speed and I, I could beat him. Being a professional basketball player, more often than not, means that you will have to make a living away from your loved ones. A side effect of that distance is that when something bad happens, you can't always be as close as you want. That's what happened last season, when Slaughter's young sister Antonita collapsed during a university game. Although she turned out to be OK, AJ could do nothing about it when the initial scare reached him. It was very difficult not to be there. Uh, I was away in France. and. Uh... I wasn't watching the game, but I heard the news and I really didn't know what was going on. So it was really a tough time being away, not knowing what happened and what was going on. For the moment, it is AJ who carries the pro basketball banner for the Slaughter family. But he does not do so alone. He is very conscious of the fact that during those backyard games throughout the years, and now receiving their support at long distance, his family has been the catalyst for his basketball career. family that knows the game and um, knows what it takes to be good and and how to win. I mean, uh, we will watch each other play and critique each other after games and just help each other improve. chance to win back-to-back -back EuroLeague titles happens rarely, if ever, for most players. Early in the 2013 championship game in London, the opportunity to repeat seemed anything but sure for the great Vasilis Banoulis. Real Madrid had led by 17 points before his teammates cut the difference to four. But at half-time, Spanoulis had zero points. What happened when he returned from the locker room, however, changed basketball history. The game is 40 minutes, it's not 20 minutes. I thought that uh, the difference was not so big uh, in the half, so the other guys, my teammates made a great job to, to be close on the game. So yeah, I felt that I have to do something to help the team, also from my side. Spanoulis did not wait. A minute into the second half, he struck from long range for his first three points of the game. He then scored from the arc on the next two possessions too, for three three-pointers in just 75 seconds. None of it, he remembers, was planned. Usually I'm not thinking what I will do, you know, I do in the game what uh, the defense is giving to me, you know, if, if I had to to, show, to make good shots, uh, if they give me these good shots, I will take them. If I have to, to make some uh, creations for my teammates, I will make this. You know, I don't have something specific in my mind when I have the ball. You know, I try to do what my, the differences give me. Madrid rallied late in the third quarter to retake a brief lead, but early in the fourth, Spanulis was ready with another picture-perfect three-point shot. 
set the stage for his fifth one, which was pure serendipity. It's obvious my confidence was uh, very high. I saw the clock that it was remaining uh, three, four seconds, three seconds more, and you know, I, d I didn't have other choice just uh, to shoot with confidence. And uh, you know, I was lucky, and uh, the shot was successful. Olympiakos won 100 to 88 after having scored an incredible 63 points in the second half, while Madrid had 47 and Spanolis himself 22. He was then crowned Final Four MVP again as his team became just the second in two decades to repeat as Euroleague champion. This was a great game, great feelings. It's something that did not happen so often, you know to beat down 17 and to come back in the, in the final of Euroleague and to score uh, 100 points and to make such a game in a back-to-back -back title. Uh, this is something incredible and, you know, it's beautiful memories. Reigning Euroleague Rising Star Award winner Bogdan Bogdanovic continued to shine with his first B-Win MVP of the week honour. Bogdanovic torched EA7 and Pori Armani Milan for 25 points and a performance index rating of 32 that lifted his Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul to a 98-77 victory and a spot in the playoffs. Bogdanovic's index rating was the highest of any player on a winning team in top 16 round 11. He also had four assists, two steals and shot six for six from the foul line in a brilliant performance. Now let's check out the top five plays of the week. Number five, Victoria Spain. We've seen Othello Hunter in the top 10 before, and here he is again, receiving a pass and destroying the rim. An awesome slam from Othello Hunter. Up he goes. Number four, Tel Aviv, Israel. No top 10. It's the same without this kind of play from Maccabi. Alex Tyus, an incredible one-handed alley-oop slam. Brian Randall's pass, Tyus's spectacular finish. Number three, Athens, Greece. Demarcus Nelson takes control for Panathinaikos, considering his options. That's the best option. Taking matters into his own hands, blasting over Andres Nocioni for a brutal finish. Demarcus Nelson. Number two, Istanbul, Turkey. Fenerbahce ball, but Frank Eligar makes a great block. EA7, Milan converted into instant offense. Alessandro Gentile goes to the rim to finish the fast break alley oop. Marshawn Brooks with the pass after the block by Eligar. Brooks floats it up. Gentile knows where to go. Number one, play of the week from Athens, Greece. Final stages of a big win. Vlantimir Jankovic with the pass. James Gist explodes the spectacular slam. It's showtime in Athens. Look at the celebrations. A great pass. And what a finish from James Gist. A coaching legend returns to face his former team in the game of the week, while a group leader seeks to assert some authority over the reigning champions at the venue for this season's Final Four. Coaching Dean Dujan Ivkovic will take centre stage in the game of the week as he leads playoff chasing Anadolu FS Istanbul into a meeting with Olympiakos and his first return to Pireus since he and the Reds won a second title together in 2012. One Istanbul team on its way to the playoffs, Fenerbahce Ulker, and its scoring sensation Andrew Gadelok will be ready to welcome rebounding specialist Sonikaha Malaga and the always determined Carlos Suarez. An entertaining Russian derby lies in store as a pair of fast paced and high scoring teams, Nizhny Novgorod and Seska Moscow, go head to head in a mouth watering showdown between two of the top 16's best ranked performers. Taylor Rochester and Nando De Colo. 
And Group F's action concludes with a must-win battle between two teams with their sights set on the fourth playoff spot, EA7 Emporio Armani Milan and Laboral Cucha Vittoria. Group E is headlined by a rematch from last season's thrilling championship game as title holders Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv and the all-action Alex Tyus face a tough road assignment against Real Madrid and the magic Sergio Rodriguez at Barclay Card Arena, where both hope to return for May's Final Four. Another perennial Final Four contender, FC Barcelona and all Euroleague big man Ante Tomic will attempt to further strengthen their playoffs challenge on the road as Jalgiris Kaunas and sharpshooter Arturas Milaknis gun for their first win in more than a decade against the visitors. Group E also features another pair of games with playoff implications as Alba Berlin hosts Arvenas Vedsta Telecom Belgrade and Panathinaikos Athens travels to Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul. We'll be back next week with more Euroleague action. See you then.